Hey everyone, it's Nick and Ron with another edition of Ask Ron. How are you doing today, Ron? I'm good. We're in the second day of the uh, Great American Real Estate Summit, and you know, an awful lot of good information going by here. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Uh, we got a few questions this week um, from uh, two of our uh, more more uh, uh, students that ask a lot of questions. They don't name don't start with Tony. Do they? <laughs> That's the first ones. Oh, okay. Uh, Tony and Angie from Columbus, Ohio. Hi, Ron. We had a panel of three insurance agents speak to our RIA group recently. Good. They said that if you had a tenant buyer in your house and the tenant buyer has not replaced the battery in their smoke detector or taken it down altogether and the house burns down, the insurance can be invalidated if they prove that is the case. With a more hands-off approach than we would have with just a renter, what should we be doing in terms of inspections with tenant buyers in our homes to ensure no. that they are not doing something like this to in invalidate the insurance? Maybe if you're worried about that, maybe it's worth your while to put hardwired uh, alarms in there so that batteries never go bad on them. Yeah. Um, would you do any other inspections or anything else like that? Or Well, the first thing I'd do is even verify that information is correct. Sure. And therefore, if it's correct, I, I, I'm sure it's, I'm, I'm sure it's not a law, though. It's probably just an insurance company policy. Right. So, you know, if, if that's an issue, like I said, fix them so they can't go bad or dead. All right. There you go. You can you can put anything you want in your lease option agreement that your tenant's going to do face their batteries or all, you know, whatever you put in there doesn't matter. Um, if the um, well, insurance company wants to come after you and not pay the bill, they can still do it. Yeah, I, I would have to imagine that uh, if you have a landlord policy that it probably doesn't have a, I don't know, yeah, I guess you have to check it, but maybe different types of policies. Well, that's the kind of reason why we tell everybody don't own anything in your own name. Just crap, just like that, okay? Uh, if you don't own the house in your own name and you don't guarantee debt, there ain't much they could do but take the house away and that's after you made a ton of money on it. Sure. Uh, next question, uh, I've got about four questions here from uh, Sophia Ivanov, who just... Uh, um, is on our summit and and won the commercial property boot camp, but then didn't take it. She's already a master. I remember. Uh, Sophia and we Vassal. We took care of her, her though, didn't we? Uh, we did. We Send did. Send her yeah. a certificate for a Big Mac or something. <laughs> <Huh>? Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, they're in Naples, Florida. Um, new masters. Uh, if I put a house in, I'm buying into its own land trust, then own that land trust in my Roth, Roth IRA owned mm -hmm. LLC. Can't do that. You can't put a house in your IRA, period. Your IRA has to buy it directly from the seller. So okay, that's I, a no -no. I think that's what they're saying here. Let me, let me, uh, let me no, start over. No, no. Okay, if no. I put a house I'm buying into its own land trust and own that land trust in my Roth IRA owned LLC, mm -hmm. yeah. I understand I can't live in it myself. Right. But can my grandma or no, my brother live nobody, in that house? Nobody in your family up or down can live in that house. Your brother can. Okay. Um, no, uh, second question, is it possible for the VA, the person calling our Ron's Gold leads, to put their name somewhere on the lead sheet so we can say, my assistant, Jen, called you a few minutes ago, instead of just my assistant? Doesn't make any difference. The seller don't remember the name, the things you worry about for crying out loud, huh? Well, she, what she's saying, this is from experience, she's saying people often say, so many people have called me that, what, what was your assistant's name? Uh, and maybe you say, oh, you know, I have a few. Yeah, I have several. I can't remember which one called you or whatever <laughs> lie you want to make up. <coughs> well, I've you, never had in my life anybody ask me that. It's not really a lie because you do have several uh, yeah, uh, VAs calling your leads for you. So, All right, uh, number three. Um, other than Zillow's rent estimate and rentometer um, or rentometer, which uh, have been giving me some widely varying rents, how can I get an accurate feel for what it would, what the rent would be? Ask a local realtor or what? Put the house on the market and tell you what the market will pay because that's the only time you're ever going to know. And I can tell you it's always going to be more than what they show on rentometer. But it's just a gauge. I mean, it, it is a good gauge. What's, to tell you what they, somewhere around what they ought to be. But again, you're going to get more than that. Yeah. You can also search for houses for rent in that same area. Yeah, you could. Do a little bit of homework on your own. You could also ask a realtor if you wanted to and let them do the homework. All right, and final question from uh, Sophia and Vassal. Um, is there a correct way to handle a seller who we discover has more than one house to sell? 
or do we evaluate each one they own separately versus making a package deal? Well, uh, if they have several houses, then they, you should put them all on a spreadsheet. If they want you to buy all of them. The, you can actually close on them in one deed if you want to, but you better sure have a release ag agreement and your uh, mortgage back to them, your note back to them, because you want to sell them off one at a time, you want to establish that price going in, not have to go beg them uh, going out to release the property. And um, I always like for them to release, uh, well, in this case, they're all houses, so you just need to determine uh, what you're willing to pay that seller on each one of these houses and still leave plenty of room in it for you above that. Uh, well, but they, they have to physically sign a release and it has to be recorded. So, you know, you can't force them to do that if you don't have any agreement, but you can force them to do that if it's built in the agreement up front. All right. Built in the mortgage. All right. That's it for this week, Ron. That's all. Okay. Well, years are passing. <laughs> Time's are wasting. So get out there and get something going. You don't get it done now. When will you? Come on, let's go. If you've been, if you're watching me right now, you've probably seen me so many times you're getting sick of me. So come on out there and get some money and get some deals and let me know. And I'll put you up on the wall here with the rest of the folks who send us testimonials of get out there and making money. Got to start implementing. You can sit in front of this camera the rest of your life. It ain't going to make you a nickel. You got to use this and get out there and start implementing. And by the way, if you're interested in our four day boot camp, we got it lowest I've ever sold it in 40 years is right now. So get on the phone and call us and we'll give you a great deal on it and some extra bonuses as well. But that's not gonna last forever. See you next week. All right, thank you.